In this video, we are going to learn binary logistic regression with a continuous independent variable. Example number one we use today is data from patients who are admitted to ICU with sepsis. And we will examine Apache 2 scores relation to mortality. The following figure shows 30-day mortality in a sample of septic patient with x-axis being their baseline Apache 2 score. And patients are coded as 1 or 0 depending on whether they are dead or alive in 30 days respectively. So as you see, this patient, these patients are survivors and these patients are deceased. And this patient has a Apache score of 2. And as expected, this patient survived. And this patient has a Apache score of 10. And this patient died. And this patient's Apache score is 25 and died within 30 days. And there is one patient whose Apache score is actually worse of all patients, but this patient survived. Right. So let's see what happened if you fit the linear regression with this data. And you know, linear regression would not work well since it could produce predicted value go beyond 1 and go below 0. And since patient survived the coded 0 and patient died coded 1, so you know those values do not make any sense. Instead, we are going to fit curve, which is nonlinear, okay, so that it does not go beyond 1 and it does not go below 0. So this is a form or shape of logistic regression. So data has a sharp survival cutoff point between patients who live or die. Data that has a sharp survival cutoff point between patients who live or die should have a large value of beta. So beta is a log of odds ratio. Okay? So the higher the value of beta and you have a better separation compared to the graph below. The data with the lengthy transition from survival to death should have a lower value of beta. Okay? And so using this S-shaped nonlinear line, the expected value does not go below 0 or does not exceed 1. Now let's think about what is this predicted value. Outcome change from 0 to 1. Okay? And predicted value is a continuous variable which moves from 0 to 1 which is predicted probability of having events. Okay? So therefore, it does not go below 0 and go beyond 1. Let's analyze the real data. And data we use is support.sav. This is example number 2. Support.sav contain data from 1,000 critically ill patients who are admitted to ICU. And we want to assess association between creatinine level to hospital mortality. And creatinine was measured at three days after ICU admission. Okay, So we are going to open logistic regression box and put the hospital dead as a dependent variable. And CREA is a valuable for creatinine, so we put it in a covariate box. And let's make sure creatinine is not the categorical variable, and which is not binary. Creatinine is a continuous variable, so we can put in the covariate box. Okay, and let's click 95% confidence interval. And this is the result. In our example, the parameter estimate for creatinine was 0 0.239, okay? And this translates into odds ratio of 1.27. And let's explain this using general terminology. What does this mean? Odds of dying, not the risk, not probability. Odds is not the same as risk or proportional probability, okay? So you have to make sure you say odds here. The odds of dying increases by 27% by any increase of one creatinine level. And here we are assuming a linearity that this odds ratio remains constant 
for any one unit increase in creatinine. So this is called linearity assumption. So it doesn't matter Apache score change from 2 to 3 or 39 to 40. In any one unit increments in Apache, odds of dying increase by 27%. This is a predicted value based on this logistic regression. Let me show you how to get this predicted value. So you go to SPSS. So we fit binary logistic regression. Go to regression, binary logistic, and we put the hospital dead here and creatinine in this box. Okay? And click option and click confidence interval. Right? And then if you want to compute predicted probability of dying by level of creatinine and paste that into working data set and what you do is you click this save button and click probability okay and anything you click here will be created as a new variable and paste into working data set okay so you click continue and okay so go back to SPSS data sheet and this is a predicted probability. All right, what does this mean? Patient whose creatinine level is 0 0.59997 at A3 in ICU has 19% of chance of dying within 30 days. And patient whose creatinine level is 5.7998 at day 3 of ICU and predicted probability of dying in 30 days is 45 percent. Okay, and a patient whose creatinine level is 8.5996, and this person has 61.59 percent chance of dying within 30 days in ICU. So let's go back and click on Hosmer and Lemerger test in option. So you go back to SPSS and regression binary logistic and click on options and there is a Hosmer and Lemerger goodness of fit and this will examine how well is your prediction okay and how well the model predict mortality using creatinine so you click continue and okay so this will give output called Hosmer and Lemerger test and Hosmer and Lemerger test and unlike other p-value, here you look for a large p-value. Okay? And no hypothesis is data fit, model fit well with data. So you don't want to reject a null hypothesis. So in this case, p-value is very small. So this indicates poor fit. So prediction is not working well. So why is that? Of course, we included only creatinine level. So let's redo your regression by adding more variable. We have age, heart rate, PAFI ratio, bilirubin level, and pH, a white blood cell count, respiratory rate, temperature, and albumin level. And one, after you include all these variables, and Hosmer and Lemerger test improved. Okay, so this is a huge improvement and this indicates good fit. For goodness of fit test, we look for p-value which is greater than probably 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 okay? and sometimes we say 0 0.5. So this is extremely good fit. Alright, so let's redo our Logistic regression including these variables. Regression binary logistic. And here we include age, heart rate, which you can put them in blood pressure, PAFI, bilirubin, pH, white blood cell count, respiratory rate, temperature of human. Okay, and then click OK. okay. And I probably didn't include the same sets of covariates as uh, lecture note. 
But here, Holtzman Lemessurier indicate p value is 0.589, and it's still a good fit. Okay, so、uh, let's look at the data set. So we pasted into predicted probability in here based on this larger model. Okay, so this means person whose age is 42 and male and creatinine level is 7.29, heart rate is 130. PAFI rate ratio is 315. PAFI is 315. Bilirubin is 3.799. pH 7 and zero count for white blood cell and 18 respiratory rate and 38 temperature and two albumin level has predicted probability of dying as high as 65%. Yeah, whereas patient whose age is thirty nine, male, creatinine level is six point six nine nine, heart rate one hundred ten, and blah blah blah. And this patient has predicted probability of dying within thirty days, being eleven percent. So what logistic regression just did is something you probably do regular basis at the practice. When you see patient, when you see these values, and you probably compute what is the prognosis of this patient, okay, and then convert that into probability. So logistic regression did just did the same thing. In next several slide, and we will learn another technique of showing goodness of fit. How good is a prediction, and based on Logistic regression, which is ROC curve and calculation plots, and I will put this in the separate video.